You're watching A Star TV. Its owners and associates take no responsibility for the opinions or statements made by the hosts of this talk show or their guests. Welcome to All About the Law. And here's your host, Willie Powell. Hello and welcome to the show, everybody. I'm your host, Attorney Willie Powell. We have a great show for you tonight. But first, I want to give a belated Veterans Day shout out to all of our veterans and those who are currently serving in our armed forces. I'll have more to say about veterans and their special place that they hold in my heart later in the show. Tonight, the show is all about starting a business in a pandemic. It may sound crazy, but a lot of people are taking this time to test their fate and their faith by starting a new business. But before we get into that, we want to talk a little politics. Joining me now is attorney and political analyst, Sonia Rash. Welcome to All About the Law, Sonia. Well, thank you so much, and thank you so much for having me here today. Oh, so glad that you were able to join and, and come out and spend some time with us today. Wow, that was a lot that took place and over this uh, whole election and whatnot. I, I tell you, did you have a feeling? What are your thoughts on how tight the race was? Well, the race was tight, and we have to realize that in Texas, we have predominantly been a Republican state. Yes. So I think that we are slowly turning, but it is slow, and we're hoping that maybe in the next two to four years, yeah. we can inch a little bit further down in that. Right. You know, that's you bring up an excellent point, because I, I listening and kind of being a part of this whole election... Some people thought that maybe even this time around in 2020, it may turn purple or maybe even blue. Uh, but then others were saying maybe 2024, uh, you know, but it's really interesting because Houston is the most diverse city in all of, the, of America. And it's right here in the heart of Texas. So, you know, what are your thoughts? I know you're saying two to three years, four. Do you really think that Texas could ever really turn purple or blue like California? Well, let me tell you, what I find is that Houston, as you said, has predominantly been a Democratic yes. city. Yes. Um, Fort Bend, for example, which is the neighbor to Houston, yes. um, in the years past, it was also very Republican. Yes. But we see this time around yeah. that Fort Bend has a high number of Democratic candidates. Yes. So slowly mm -hmm. but surely. But I think this time around, unfortunately or fortunately, wherever <laughs> you stand on that position, <laughs> that there are people we forgot about the people that live in the rural areas of Texas. Yes. And those are the people who really came out also and voted. We had a high number yes. of voting turnout in yes. Harris County, in yes. Fort Bend. Yes. But I think that a lot of our candidates focused so much on these areas, and I'm talking specifically about our statewide elections, that they tended to forget about the rural areas yes. of Texas. Yes, yes. Well, I mean, it's such a vast state, you know, and, and, and there's a lot of people that accumulate in those other areas besides your Houston and your Dallas's and your Correct. San Antonio's and Austin's. So you make a very valiant point. Let me ask you this. What do you think about, on a larger scale, on a national scale, this smooth transition of leadership? What are your thoughts on that? Well, I certainly hope that there will be a smooth transition of leadership. I know that the work, the groundwork has already been laid sure. by Donald Trump, yes. our uh, president, yes. um, that either way mm -hmm. it goes, if he does not win, there will be a lot of fighting going on. Yeah. There will be, and I'm talking about legal fights. Yes. There are also a mm -hmm. lot of lawsuits mm -hmm. already headed towards, if not already there, the Texas Supreme, I'm sorry, the, the, United, the United States, States. Supreme Court sure. about voting rights, about sure. elections. So, 
I certainly hope it's smooth. It definitely was a lot more smoother than I expected during polling. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping that's an indication of what will happen. Right when the votes are finally counted. Right. Well, you know, that's true. I hope it's a peaceful transition as well. We certainly don't need any more craziness, uh, whether it's out in the public or even just unnecessary litigation, tying things up in court when right. it's not necessary, right? Absolutely. So um, what are your thoughts on this? Um, growing up, I used to love to watch a program called uh, called Autobots and Decepticons. Transformers, oh, right? Okay. <laughs> oh <my laughs> Transformers. <laughs> and, you know, as you know, they were opposite one another and they could never really get on the same page of oh. anything like this. I think about bipartisanism issues here and I wonder, do you think that there might be any hope for <laughs> uh, Democrats and Republicans to get to work together? Uh, or is that, is that a thing in the past? You know what? I think there's hope. Mm -hmm. Because the more people that I speak with, the more I think people don't really seem to realize that we have more in common with each other yes. than we don't. That's right. And the issues are, unfortunately, we wind up looking at snippets of what we see on television, what we hear in on the radio, instead of just talking to one another. Because when we talk to one another, oh. we're going to find out that not only we really have the same issues. We really have the same needs and wants, whether you're Republican or Democrat. That's right. That's right. It gets so, back to the basic necessities of life. Absolutely. We all want good education for our children. Yes. We all want to have a good and safe area where we live, yeah. whether you're Republican or Democrat. Yeah. And I think as elected officials, the majority of them, yeah. We all want the same things. That's right. Well, I certainly hope we get a way to work together yes. on that and get on the same page. Thank you so much for joining us. It's such a pleasure to always have you here. And hey, look, don't be a stranger, okay? If I give you a call, I'd love to see you again. Is I that okay? Absolutely. And thank you so much for inviting me to be here. It was my pleasure. Oh, thank you so much. And thanks, Sonia. When we come back, starting a business in a pandemic, is, is, it, is it a good idea? Or is it straight crazy? <laughs> We're breaking it down. When we continue, stick with us. Stay right there. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back with more All About the Law. All About the Law with Willie Powell. Have you been injured in an 18-wheeler accident, truck accident, car accident? Was someone texting and ran into the back of you, not paying attention? It doesn't matter what it is. Give me a call, Attorney Willie Powells. We'll fix it today. The number is 281-881-2457. Again, that number is 281-881-2457. We'll fix it today. Call Attorney Willie Powells. Welcome back to All About the Law with Willie Powells. I'm your host, Willie Powells. The disruption caused by COVID-19 has triggered people to rethink their entire lives. You know, while some folks are thinking this may be the time to throw the towel in and retire, others are thinking now's the perfect time to look at new opportunities. How about All About the Law with Willie Powells? <laughs> well, anyway, Joining me now are two women who know something about starting businesses and can shed some light on why a pandemic might be the time to take a leap of faith. Please welcome Dr. Valerie Jackson, owner of Monarch Family Services, and Hannah Gibson of Creator Core, a brand and marketing company. Welcome, ladies. Hello. Hey. Hello. 
So good to have you both joining me today. I feel so special. <laughs> you know, I like, you know, like a kid in the candy store, right? <laughs> well, you know, Dr. Jackson, thank you for taking time out. I, I am so glad that you, you have an expertise in business startups. And I, we want to just kind of talk to our audience today a little bit about, you know, what it takes. What should you be considering if you want to start a business during the pandemic, right? So I have a few questions for you. Let me know, right? If somebody is thinking about starting a business right now during the pandemic, should they be basing that on their passion or should they be basing that upon the need that's going on with COVID-19 right now? Combination of both. Mm -hmm. uh, and an explanation of what I mean by that is that um, if you are working in your passion, mm -hmm. then it is sustainable it is rewarding mm -hmm. and it will uh, drive you to even uh, expand more on that idea uh, rather than working just towards a need uh, in, in a particular for a particular population or time. Wow. And so also um, there are lots of opportunities right now during the pandemic to expand upon more technology based uh, companies and our services. Uh, that will benefit people uh, with uh, that that is looking for something that's more convenient, wow. uh, and so that's why stocks uh, in Amazon and Walmart online and all the all the dot coms are are booming because we are uh, forced to, forced to stay more at home than we ever have in probably our lives, and and um, as well as the social distancing mandates have required that we take measures that we would normally uh, would normally do, such as going to the grocery store. Now mm -hmm. it has its own set of challenges where it's just easier and more safe to order online. Right. And so this also, these are, this uh, not one service provider, not one company will be able to, to accommodate all the demand that's coming out of these necessary um, needs that are, 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 that we now see in our, in our, a population that includes more of a you know social distancing or self isolation or work at home type um, nuance now right. and so when you're thinking about your passions you have to you can't think uh, presently about storefront or or brick or modern brick and mortar uh, you have to think more about how will you deliver that same product or service through measurements that do accommodate social distancing are and also people that are having to work at home uh, more than they ever have or now that they're permanently based at home and Hannah I've got a question for you so as we are thinking about something uh, in the lines of what Dr. Valerie Jackson just shared with us we also have to be thinking about branding and marketing right yes. because if you could have the greatest idea or concept or want to target that need mm -hmm. but if they don't know you're out there you know if there's no yeah, brand or no marketing it's a problem correct so Absolutely. shed some light with us as well what do you think what is the best way to get some digital marketing uh, going or getting that brand set so that if you have an idea or concept of business that you want to start mm -hmm. you can make sure that the population could be global population knows how to find you can be aware about it exactly so what I tell some of my clients um, starting off is that start off with a strategy. Yeah. The importance of starting off with a solid foundation or some type of vision, goal, and strategy of how to work towards that. So just as Dr. Uh, Valerie Jackson mentioned, start off with your passion, things that you're interested in, you're more, you're more than likely to see that further than just something as like a flyby or something sure. as like a hit, a hit or miss. Sure. So in this COVID, technical environment that we're in, the definite um, thing to do is to start early with having some type of consulting meeting with somebody. Sure. That can be with yourself. And in that, you should be coming up with things like your business plan. Mm -hmm. A big common thing a lot of people want to jump to mm -hmm. prematurely, I believe, and I tell some of my clients, is the branding and the marketing and that next step. But first, Figure out what do you want this to be? Who is your ideal customer? Right. Do you have a business plan? What products and services are you trying to offer? And having that solid foundation, right. as well as with a name, right. which a lot of people kind of overseeing, then they have to retro back.
and realize like, oh, that name is taken. Or, oh man, I can't get that as a DBA because right. not in my county. Or right. I can't get that as an LLC because it's already taken in my state. Exactly. So doing that preliminary, doing that on the preliminary end will allow you to be able to get your ducks in a row, start off within your logo, get your right. logo built on that, then start off with your website, then get that, have the building blocks in place so that you can use your time most effectively, um, especially during this pandemic where you're most of the time at home anyway. Right. <laughs> well, you know, speaking of LLCs, I could ask either Dr. Valerie Jackson or yourself, mm -hmm. um, you know, when is a good time, and I, you know, you kind of alluded to it, but is that something they should be thinking about in the very beginning, getting LLC set up and getting business plans and marketing set up? Should it that be before you kind of jump out? I'll let Hannah, I'll let you floor it, and then I'll, I'll, I'll spin to uh, Bali on that so we're not talking over each other. Absolutely. So I think that, of course, starting off, so I okay. agree that, yeah, starting off, having it to where at least have what your, what your business is going to be about. And a lot of times that can dictate whether it's an LLC or a DBA. Mm -hmm. And also think about your own situation. Right. Some people may, may not need that other type of security when it right. comes to for, formulating an LLC because, hey, I'm okay with my social security number and my business being linked together for having a DBA. Right. Some people really need that separation. That's what right. we really recommend is having that separation up front. Right. So you can start uh, um, uh, um, aligning, aligning things, yourself. personal versus business, so that right. you're not in a rut two, three years later That's trying right. to be with your CPA. So, <laughs> right. Separated. Right. Okay, now, Valerie, I'm going to actually put a little spin on the question because this gets right into an area where we have worked on multiple occasions, and, and that is you have an expertise in forming nonprofits mm -hmm. as well as for-profits. So okay. I'm going to spin this question. I want you to just kind of give us two or three pointers, just two or three, letting them know the pros and cons between having a nonprofit business as opposed to a for-profit business. Mm -hmm. Okay, so just give us two or three nuggets. That's all on that. Well, well, for one, I always tell um, visionaries, because that's what I call, you know, mm -hmm. people, aspiring entrepreneurs or entrepreneurs, visionaries, figure out what your funding sources are mm -hmm. uh, for both. Because when you think of nonprofit, nonprofit is just a terminology, but it's just a tax exempt organization because there, there is profit into nonprofits. There are profits to be made for nonprofits. You have to figure out your funding source before you even, I always recommend whatever the industry you're going in, figure out the funding source. How will, how will you make, basically how will you make money doing or pursuing that venture? Right. Um, and based on your funding source okay. and, and the way it will be funded, see if you meet the criteria professionally uh, or, or with experience, with uh, experience degrees or licensure or, or whatever, to make sure that you can uh, dwell into that arena. I always recommend it's an arena that you have um, years of exposure to, not just, yeah. you know, because I have sometimes I have construction workers that tell me that they want to start nursing homes have zero nursing home experience. <laughs> that, is, that is highly, 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 yeah, just avoid that. I mean, yeah. even though we say, oh, there's a lot of money. And I always get the, it's a lot of money in nursing homes, or it's a lot of money in this and a lot of money in that. But I've never done it, but I hear a lot of money. Yeah. That is not the way to go. Absolutely. You, 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 will lose, you will lose in that business game, even if you're able to start it. You will lose in that business game. Because you don't have the expertise, you don't have the knowledge base, or, or, or you don't even know how it's funded. So first thing before, I would say before coming up with a name, figure out your funding sources are so you can survive. If, it is to, or if more companies are incorporated as a for-profit in that area, are they incorporated as a non-profit? The way you make that decision is that um, um, decide, look at when you're comparing, doing a market analysis, comparing yourself business, are they mostly funded? By um, by a monetary exchange, either it's a good or service, and there's a monetary exchange between the 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 uh, the business and the client, or is it more of where they're you know you're 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 bidding for a contract, and then you can also write grants for the same service to supplement the uh, the, the 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 revenue, and so, okay, so that is the way you. Dr. Val, I, mm -hmm. I hate to interrupt you, but we've got to pay some bills. You were just talking about money. <laughs> so, 
So please, please, please hold that thought. And we'll be right back with All About the Law with Attorney Willie Powell. Stay right there. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back with more All About the Law. All About the Law with Willie Powell. Have you been injured in an 18-wheeler accident, truck accident, car accident? Was someone texting and ran into the back of you, not paying attention? It doesn't matter what it is. Give me a call. Attorney Willie Powell. We'll fix it today. The number is 281 281- 881-2457. Again, that number is 281-881-2457. We'll fix it today. Call attorney Willie Powell. If you would like to submit your video for Sue or sit your ass down, just head over to our Instagram page at All About the Law Show and click on the link in the bio. Welcome back to All About the Law. Of course, I'm your host, Attorney Willie Powells, and joining the discussion with us is going to be Mindy Wynn. She owns her own restaurant, Bon Santum Restaurant, Um, and um, Hannah, joining Dr. Valerie Jackson and Hannah Gibson. We're going to talk about and continue this discussion with, you know, starting a business and how do you keep a business going during the pandemic? So, Mindy, I want to ask you, uh, first of all, what does Bon Santu stand for? The name of your restaurant. Bon Santu means House of Papaya Salad. House of Papaya yes, Salad. Wow, doesn't that food. sound so delicious? <laughs> yes, we have seven different kinds of papaya. Yes, seven salad different. There, so it's oh, amazing. wonderful. Well, you know, with COVID nineteen going on and yeah. all the rules and regulations and trying to, you know, s- s- keeping people safe. How do you keep your restaurant going? Well, we offered. Um, Free deliveries at sure. that time. Yes. Yeah, when um, it was on, around April. Yes. We offered free delivery. We had a special going on. Yes. Um, it was it was hard at first, but yeah. you know it bounced back up. Yes. We had the same customer that comes all the time. Right. And from everywhere too, so it was oh, great. Oh, we well, that's wonderful. Well, what would be your advice to people who are looking to start a business yeah. or keep their business going during a pandemic? Basically, just um, like right now. Yes. Uh, you, in terms of, you know, what sort of things do you do or that you've done mm-hmm. in addition to just keep your business thriving during this very challenging time? You know, what advice would you tell people, other people um, that are, you know, have a business or mm-hmm. they, maybe even in the same field, restaurant area? You know, what, what things should they try to do to make sure that their business can thrive just like yours during COVID-19? Well, I would say you have to minimize, you know, your workers yes. or cut back on certain things, yes. offer free delivery like I did, yes. um, just keep going and, you know, it will flow back up. And we, we're very lucky that we already have, you know, customer that's returning and, um, so on. Yeah. It's great. Well, that's very good. You know, that's very innovative. And people always love free deliveries. Mm -hmm. You're looking at one of them. Mm -hmm. Valerie, on a final note, what would you also say, you know, for in this situation of the current pandemic, you have a business and uh, as many gave great advice for if you have a restaurant, is there a nugget you can leave us with as you know, what would you say one thing uh, for people with businesses right now during the pandemic, what should they try to do to keep that business thriving as well? If you're a service provider, uh, offering your services uh, as much as possible virtual. That's what uh, kept us alive through the pandemic. Uh, we, I have a um, behavioral health psychological services organization. Yes. And uh, prior to the pandemic, 90% of our clients were coming into the office. Well, um, as soon as March came, mm. uh, it took us about three days to transfer over to virtual services. And um, our revenues went up by 150% uh, wow. because wow. We, were, we were prepared. Because we, we had already, um, I had started talking to my clinicians about offering their services online. And they were like, oh, no, no, you know, we don't think it's a, um, um, you know, it's feasible. And, mm. and we even 
pitched it to some of our patient clients and the clients are like, oh, no, I like seeing my, my, my clinician in office. But as soon as the pandemic hit, hit uh, a mm-hmm. lot of people um, were, were at, you know, well, a lot of people stayed at home and obeyed the, obeyed the stay at home orders. And so and so they still continued with their services. People started experiencing a lot of depression, and anxiety because of the time. And so we got, you know, double uh, referrals. And present day, because we were on the, the forefront of delivering all of our service virtually, we're, we're, we became a front runner um, that's in this industry. That, that, that's but totally, it's, it's, totally outstanding. No, no, that's great advice. And, and, and Hannah, I, just on that note, on that note, what would be your nugget for us as well? So to kind of piggyback a little bit of what Dr. Um, Valerie said, like Creative Core, we are a digital, we're a uh, service-based uh, company. And so we offer all digital services. We really didn't have the issue of meeting in person. So a big nugget I would give for aspiring entrepreneurs and small business owners is if you have the ability and the capability, really, really try to offer a digital type of service product Excellent. that can easily, that doesn't require people to be in person with you because even beyond COVID, everybody has that, that digital bug. Yes. Everybody has that virtual bug. So it's That's going right. to be with us beyond COVID. So you want to make sure you're still I relevant. want to say thank you to all my beautiful guests. Thank Dr. You. Valerie Jackson, thank you for your genius and joining with us. Hannah, Thank you so much for taking time and helping educating us on all the topics at Mindy, my other beautiful clients. Thank you so much. I'm going to be back over there for some papayas. (laughs) Y'all better go get some, too, because I'm going to eat them all up. And with that, we're going to take a quick commercial break. We'll be right back with All About the Law with Attorney Willie Powell's. If you would like to submit your video for Sue or sit your ass down, just head over to our Instagram page at All About the Law Show and click on the link in the bio. Stay right there, don't go anywhere. We'll be back with more All About the Law. All About the Law with Willie Powell. I'm attorney Willie Powell. Allow me to express myself with you. If you've been hurt or injured in a car or truck accident, give me a call and we'll get it fixed today. Welcome back. This week, sue or sit your ass down sure looks like someone I know pretty well. Let's see what his problem is. Hey, Uncle Will. This year for my birthday, we went fishing. So Mom, Papa, and I went fishing, and we caught kingfish and a whole bunch of other species of fish. And by the time we had to get off the boat, our coolers were overflowing with fish and We thought we had our 10 sharks, but we only had two. So by the time we got home and we started filleting the fish, we noticed that we only had two out of our 10. So we need to know if we should sue or sit. Oh, okay, little buddy. That's my little nephew there. And you're a true fisherman, just like just like your uncle. No, let's play. (laughs) Just like just like your your grandfather. (laughs) my dad, uh, and the real Tilly Willie. Okay, so look, I know you love the fish, and you had a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful outcome at your fishing trip this last weekend. And you're a little sad, right? I understand because, uh, you know, you had 10 sharks, but when you got home, you found there were only two sharks inside your little bucket. Uh, you know, I, you know, this is what I would say on this one. Um, before we jump to suing, Let's see what we can work out with the uh, with the company with the fishing company there. You know, um, this might be something to where everybody can win. And what I'm thinking in mind is, you know, maybe we give those guys a call back and all the pictures. We've got all the pictures of all the beautiful fish you caught and all the sharks and all the other fish you guys caught. Uh, and we can very clearly show which one should have been in the cooler. 
and of course the only two which were in the cooler after you got home, they might even get you a free trip. Now how cool would that be, you know? Maybe we don't have to sue them, but maybe we do. So let's just see what options that they give us. Let's call and see what options they may have for us. Let's see if we can work something out so that we're all happy in the end. Of course, if it doesn't, then yeah, maybe we'll consider suing, all right? I'll talk to you soon. And you know I don't eat fish, but I'll be at the fish fry anyway, okay? <laughs> Thanks for calling. Look, I want to hear from you as well. I want your input. If you have an idea or a topic for the show, a video to share, let me know about it. Hit us up on Facebook and Instagram at All About The Law Show. Or drop me an email at allabouttheloweshow at gmail.com. Also, if you ever need me for legal advice, or if you've been involved in an accident, head over to WillyPowellsLawFirm.com or give us a call at 281-881-2457. Again, that's 281-881-2457. Before I get out of here, I want to thank our guests today, Sonia Rash, Dr. Valerie Jackson, Hannah Gibson, and Mindy Wynn. I want to leave everybody with this final thought. Yesterday we celebrated veterans and it's one of my favorite holidays. My grandfather, Ollie, Ollie Sims, fought in the Korea War. My father, Sergeant Willie D. Powell Jr., fought in the Vietnam War. So did my godfather, Sergeant James Williams as well as a close family friend, Sergeant Ray Gutierrez, Jr. They all fought in the Vietnam War. Also, Master Chief Han, Lieutenant Colonel Sluice, the Gunny, and Captain Bowman all served in our military, and they were my direct leaders while I was part of the NJROTC program. You know, and I just learned today that my godnephew, Desmond Fishback, is also a veteran. He joined the United States Marine Corps. Hurrah! Just like his grandfather and my father. In the wake of Veterans Day, we honor all of our veterans and acknowledge their service. We speak their names and celebrate their lives. You know, the Bible says, no greater love has any man than this, than a man that laid down his life for a friend. Regardless of how these men feel about the various conflicts they fought in themselves, these are men who were willing to lay their lives down for a friend. In fact, many times they were fighting for rights they did not have themselves here in America. Still, they had hearts for the people suffering in our world. They are brave, strong, disciplined, and honorable. They were young once upon a time, still young in heart, but they are fearless and they are heroes. This week, we honor our veterans. We honor the men and women of the armed forces, Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. We salute you and we thank you for your service. Thank you so much for watching the show. I'm looking forward to you next time. Check us out. All About the Law with Attorney Willie Powells. We'll see you next time.